Off and running on this Saturday, Belmont Stakes Day edition of Gulfstream Today. Ron Nicoletti, Jason Blewett alongside from our clubhouse studios, high above the turf course and the finish line here at beautiful Gulfstream Park. And as we were running the Open, and I, I'm always captivated <laughs> about seeing that that Open, Gulfstream Park through the years, almost a uh, virtual yearbook and scrapbook. One of the last scenes we saw was <laughs> a victorious Mike Smith aboard Arrogate winning the inaugural Pegasus with Arrogate. And I'm wondering if we might see a similar similar smile and uh, an euphoric uh, sense of joy from Mike Smith uh, at around 7 p.m. tonight with Justify. With Justify winning the Triple Crown, and maybe we'll see Justify here in the Pegasus a little uh, later on after that. So we'll see how things work out, and uh, it's going to be a great, great day of racing. Yeah, building's already packed. They're yeah. buzzing down in silks. They are betting uh, with both fists, which is always appreciated, and we certainly encourage that. Should be a, a really terrific day. Here at, at Gulfstream Park, we've got a dozen races on this Saturday, June the 9th, and at Belmont Park, in fact, with Belmont Stakes Day 150, their first race coming up in just a few minutes at 11.35. Now, we've got hot off the press the updated Belmont Stakes 150 odds with Triple Crown contender Justify as of 11 a.m., and you can see the big favorite, the unbeaten Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner who's looking to make it 6 for 6, sitting at 4 to 5. Not as short with one day, basically one full day of wagering down, Ronnie. I kind of expected him with the souvenir tickets and everything else maybe to be as low as two to five or so. Yeah, it's early on. I think that uh, once the people start arriving, they'll go down a little bit. What I'm liking is my pick, Hoffberg, up there at six to one. I think it's third choice in that particular race. Looks like Bravazo is in second right now. Yeah, Bravazo, Bravazo, second choice for D. Wayne Lucas, who was looking for another Belmont Stakes victory. And then you've got co third choices at this point. Again, very little money in the pool, but right. cool looking at and cool uh, certainly taking note nonetheless with Hoffberg and uh, my man's horse, Rapoli. <laughs> stables Vino Rosso at six to one in fact although uh, a few hundred miles away I got to rock the orange and blue uh, a good good friend of mine Mike Rapoli so uh, best of luck to everybody seriously a safe trip for everybody involved up at Belmont Park and the same goes right down here in Howlandale Absolutely. Beach with our 12 race card and I kind of quipped earlier today on Twitter we've got a dozen races today <laughs> I'm saying a race for each prior triple crown champion I think that works and fits quite nicely now we'll get you up to speed with what's on tap as we do start the day a little after 1235. We have got big size, chunky size fields all day long. And in fact, we've got some maiden claimers over the fast main track, knocking heads in race number one, and they will bring on that opening high five with about 2,500 plus in the carryover pool. And that is also the starting point of the first of two pick fives on the day. I'll have back-to-back -back $24 pick five tickets coming up. Do note again, with a dozen races in the mix on this June 9th, not two, but we'll bring on a trio of pick fours. Yeah, we got that one in race number five. And of course, we we have our final pick four of the afternoon and the Rainbow Six, as we mentioned at the top, starting to really build nice. They are just about $400,000 in that pool and they believe me, they're going to send it in today because we're going to have a great gray of racing with uh, full fields. So yep. we'll see that. I'm thinking that might be up near $500,000. 500, yeah, easy. I might even take the over uh, beyond yeah. half a million today, which will be uh, really nice. And again, we thank all the fans for supporting our uh, product year-round at Gulfstream Park, rolling along with the spring meet. And as we do normally it's a daily rite of passion uh, passage that is and certainly passion involved in this case will go a uh, full circle with the opening leg of the late pick five and race number eight which is the anchor and really the centerpiece to the local product today a gp our loan stakes on this uh, belmont day here in south florida the one hundred thousand dollar soldiers dancer on the turf and a pretty good field that includes a really nice if you're a fan of the game especially here in this part of the country you know galleon mast you respect galleon 
Galley and Mass. Galley and Mass, boy, I like that horse today. There's a ton of speed in that race. We'll talk about it later on. And this one likes to come from off the pace. Looks pretty strong there. You might single that horse in your Rainbow Six, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Definitely. Now, as far as my early pick five, again, blowing up at least 48 bucks. 24 early, 24 late today. But I'm set to go on this uh, Belmont Day here at Gulfstream Park. Speaking of potential singles, I stand alone in a scratch-reduced field of six in Saturday's third with the number seven, Poja, which translates to, in both Italian and Portuguese, poetry. So let's hope that Philly is uh, poetry in motion this afternoon, one of two firsters in a guessing game type third race for trainer Antonio Sano. That's where Gonzalez is. That's where I'm making my stand for a $24 spread. I like the inside and outside horses. Well, second to last post in race number five. A couple of drop downs for me if I can make it there. I thought the fourth race was a difficult puzzle on the turf. My one opinion, and it's not an insanely strong opinion, mm -hmm. I prefer taking a price and I'm going to going to take a price thinking Swapple is just a better horse than she showed last time yeah, out. I got her down on my ticket. I think we got almost the same horses on our ticket. <laughs> I put the seven so, uh, Storm and Charlotte on top of my ticket turning back a little bit with some speed so uh, I think you're right about that race. Wide open. And too deep for me to start things out and this is a race that very much although you have a good size field as we start the early pick five and that opening super high five carryover over the fast main track at six and a half furlongs and by the way the first is a $10,000 maiden claimer. It is very much a case of two well-connected, lightly raced drop downs in the six. A Zeroma for Antonio Sato and Edgar Zayas, who plummets down to 10,000. And the number eight horse talking point is Ralph Nix in action here today, or at least his stable is. He's <laughs> up in the Big Apple. He's got Caledonia Road in the Acorn and Sutosh coming up in race two up there, the easy goer. So best of luck to Ralph Nix and the team up in New York. And we're going to take good old Ralphie boy in the first. Yeah, to talking point, drop it to the 10 level, finish that workman like fourth in its 25,000 debut. I think we got the logical two on top of our ticket in race number one. Yeah. And we both used the five Ch Chuchito, I think it's pronounced, in third. I think those are the logical three in there. We got the same try. All right, on to the turf. Let's move on. On. We hit the green, three and up, two lifetime, $10,000 claimers on a partly cloudy, as of now, Saturday, J June the 9th here at Gulfstream Park, $10,000 claimers in the second race. And I had noticed, uh, noted, A, I used three in the early pick five, and B, even though we have a couple of horses in the mix here, boxed up Ronnie between our respective <laughs> supers, I feel as though the three that I like in this race, from the number three tracking stock, who's off a layoff, that's the layoff horse that I prefer, layoff of about 50 days. Moving towards the outside, it's the eight, Mosca, who I picked on top. Quite simply, getting back on his surface, he is a turf horse, not a dirt horse. I gave him a pass, and I'm giving him a pass for his last couple. And then you have the inform horse, who's saddled with a tough post towards the outside. In fact, he'll bring up the real, that rear. That's your top pick, the number 10, two storm. Yeah, it's going to break from the outside. Uh, made that move last time out to get the lead before finishing second, but finished second in front of a pair of next out winners at the same level and distance and got to deal with that outside post and the horse that you uh, you like uh, on your ticket too that's got tracking stock is dropping a notch on the f uh, first starts and stalking the pace he finished fourth behind two stormy but I want to show you a stat on trainer Angel Rodriguez a layoff of 31 to 60 days claiming roots on the turf, he's really solid. 29%, 47% in the money, and a dollar fifty-six return of investment. So that bond does really well with this type of move. So I, I got that tick on my ticket. Um, that horse, excuse me, on my ticket today. And that layoff of 49 days for tracking <laughs> stock. I mean, really hits the sweet spot of that statistic there at a month to two months between as Angel Rodriguez tabs Jose Batista in race number two. We basically alternate like we do most days. <laughs> we run one on the main, it's to the turf, and back on. <laughs> On the main and that is the case early on on this Belmont day here at Gulfstream field of six and a, a bit of a guessing game guesswork type of field lower level field at that of these two year old Philly $25,000 maiden claimers there were very few defections today Ronnie and late scratches when we did the work earlier in the morning however races three and four had a couple and do have a couple of key defections in the third the, the real centerpiece, I mean, the real nucleus of the race was the five. It's my lucky charm off a, a solid, relatively speaking, second place finish towards the end of last month. But she has been scratched. So you're really left with four firsters, two of which are trained by Antonio Sano. And then you've got 
couple of horses who are, have already run and just haven't shown much in their careers. Yeah, and you were right about poetry. You said it's about poetry. I was trying to think of a poet and poem, but I, of course, couldn't. Daughter of Super Saver debuting for Antonio. Lasix, Edgar Zayas, the reasons you mentioned a little early when you were talking about your ticket. And that's where I went after the scratch. I mean, t it's, my luck, uh, it's my lucky charm. Eight to five in the morning line with that scratch. Wide open affair. And we see uh, this week, or we have seen this week, a, a real resurgence with trainer Antonio Sano. He's going to come at you with a, with the numbers. I mean, it's a numbers game, and he has got a huge stable. He's based here at Gulfstream. He's got another large string over in Miami Gardens at GPW. And at times, there's been a bit of a lull, but his horses have picked things up this week, and I think a trainer worth keeping tabs on. And he's got the uh, the one-two punch with uh, Poja in race number three, along with the firster by Bellamy Road and the number two, Miss Hart. Edgar, though is on our top pick. Yeah, definitely. That and strikes me <laughs> as the filly that might be a little more forward than the than than the stable mate. You yeah, know? and then uh, a, a good single there for you to keep your ticket affordable because, I mean, one of those firsts could jump up and, and maybe win it, but I, I don't have the sense of that. I think with the scratch of the five, it certainly made it look like the seven was the one. I hope so. I almost, in my mind, was saying I'm either singling Poja again because of Edgar's presence and that Antonio has gotten on a bit of a hot streak, or I'm buying the race. It's right. really <laughs> one or the other. I mean, uh, it's very hard to make the cut when you start really trying to slice and dice on who you might trim in race three because, again, it's such a guessing game. Fourth on the afternoon as we get back on the turf. These are three and up. Philly and Mayor, $10,000 claimers. This is a difficult race. And although we have the same four, we've got, I guess, Ronnie, four logical contenders. I don't think either one of us has any sort of earth-shattering 20-to-1 shot that we think is going to run big. But still, a very difficult puzzle where you're dealing with a fairly consistent group of uh, lower level turf claimers on this circuit where a number of these are in pretty good form including a horse that you've got on top the number seven storm in charlotte who's got safi joseph as he comes out of a win and made the chalk players happy yesterday with 40 fathoms yeah turning back to seven and a half for a long stay storm in charlotte after returning from their freshening went up that day and set the pace tired late finished third in a dead heat for third that afternoon but i want to show you stat on mr safi Joseph Jr., second start after a layoff. Claim is on the turf right here at Gulfstream Park. He's 3 for 18, 17%. He's in the money 50% of the time, and he's got a really nice return of investment. Probably had a bomber in there somewhere along the line. But Storm and Charlotte, just a speed play for me, but I am in total agreement with you that it could be Tiuna, it could be College Lolly, and it could be your horse on the outside, Swapple, who I had originally had third and then backed him down to fourth, and I think he could win for sure. If we get the good Swapple. Right. Her form in February and March puts her right there. In fact, I would argue it probably makes her narrowly, but makes her the horse to beat. The Swapple that ran back on May 24th, and she's one of three coming out of that race, won by the inform Feed Me Carrots, who we'll see run here tomorrow, Ronnie. I like that horse tomorrow, early on the Sunday card for trainer Yvonne Belsor off the claim. But uh, if we get the good Swapple, and with with uh, Marcus Vitali, who's had a good run of things of late, wheeling her back with, what, about two and a half weeks between between starts. I'm going to take her to pull off the upset. I just think she was outclassed two back. Not sure what happened last time, but in regards to that last race, you are going to get a much higher price than her most recent two to one. She might also get a fast pace to close into. So three pick fours in the mix here. Again, this is a extended almost marathon Saturday card here at Gulfstream Park as we have the 12 races. And with the 12, we bring on that opening leg of the middle pick four. And the one cool thing about this fifth race, look, we know these are 6250 claimers and not grade one stakes horses. We don't run that many. We don't get to see that many two turn races on the dirt. So I always think with these hard hitting older pros, it adds an intriguing little wrinkle that they've got to A, use the first finish line, and B, these horses have to negotiate uh, along with the riders, of course, two turns over the main. And you make a great point. A lot of people just joining us today, a uh, mile in the 16th races here are the first finish line. So you got a little shorter uh, stretch run in there. But I thought we both have the logical horse I think on top and that's Peace Points who's dropping to this level that we're talking about 6,250 return from about a six months layoff to track the pace finished fourth it was against better a little better that afternoon that was going a mile in the 16th it was on that good main track I think this is the logical one absolutely and Peter Walder by the way you want to talk about a trainer who if claims don't work out or horses need a drop maybe they're not doing as well per se in the sharpness department as they were once doing he is so good with these drop downs I mean 
mean, well-intentioned, just over the last five years, 50% drop in claiming price, which this gelding by More Than Ready is doing. I mean, you're dealing with a barn who not only has the rail today with Miguel Vasquez, but a barn that's 18 for 41 for 44% with those 50% drop-downs. And this harkens back, just looking at that stat, something we talk about and I talk about all the time, it seems, on the air here at Gulfstream. You've got to set your horses up for success. You've right. got to put them in races where they can be competitive and not where they're simply just over their head. And when they fire those A efforts, it doesn't matter because they're just not good enough. Well, I want to hear about the nine horse you have in second, Ned Devine. That's Ned not Devine. a horse I use. I'm just looking. I put my glasses on actually to look at it. All right. <laughs> hear me out here. I'll take Luca P. I will also right. take a horse who is proficient at two turns. A horse that ran okay, albeit running in the dated nickel claimers over the winter at Tampa Bay Downs. And if you look at the quality in the 6250 race that he's coming out of here uh, earlier this month, or I should say last month on, on, on May the 12th, right between the Derby and Preakness, I feel as though, I know he was beaten 20 lengths in that race, I feel as though that was a much deeper field than the crew that he encounters here. Well, you get a nice price on him. Well, I what he's in the morning line, but you get a nice. Oh, Netty, he should be about <laughs> thirty to one in that race. Let's try to shake him up and squeeze him into the number <laughs> race number five. As we move on to race number six, two lifetime ten thousand dollar three and up claimers at seven and a half furlongs on the turf. You and I, Ronnie, like the same horse, and it's probably for a couple of key reasons. However, I feel as though, at least in talking about the race, they're probably going to have to beat the number two Harden, who's dropping down narrowly in claiming price. Question becomes with him, does he get chewed up at a pace that could be pretty fast? I see a lot of speed in this there race. There is a lot of speed in this race, and that's one of the other reasons I used the number six in here. Crown to go. was dropping to the 10 level, got carried wide at the top of the stretch. He finished fifth that day. It was a key 16 condition claimer. Produced a couple of next out winners. We've been talking about Reed Nagel for the last week or so. He's doing exceptionally well. He's got his main man, Sammy Camacho, in the saddle. I think this one carves out a little bit of a trip behind the speed. And again, Harden is the horse to beat, but he's a little suspect going to two turns. This is a horse who, although he hasn't run awful in his two races down on this circuit for Antonio Sano, he's burned some serious money of late at 2-1 to one and 6-5. to five. And as I work my way through trying to figure out just what the early pace and race flow might be, he's got post two with Edgar, so he's likely going. The 7 Sanad is going to be a pretty big price. Really likes to get involved early. I think he's going. And then you've got Charzam towards the outside, who's a stretch out speed with a tough post. So I think he's got to be a dead set. I think there's a good chance, Ronnie, this race melts down and we might be in the right place at the right time with crown to the goal. That's the way I saw it. Have all that speed in there and certainly going to sit the trip. And as we mentioned once again, not to belabor it, that uh he, Reed Nagel just doing very well. Oh, he's been knocking him dead. Even that price that I took yesterday yeah, yeah. ran into a couple of different jackpots yeah, and he got, got stopped a couple of times. I don't think he would have won, but I just think it underscores 10 to 1 lower level maiden claimer like right. that running so well with a less than perfect trip. It just underscores how well that barn is going and they're really in a zone and we hope you're in a zone as well. We hope you're sitting on a very profitable Belmont day, but we're not done. A lot more coming your way on the other side of this quick timeout. At Express Bet, we celebrate the champions that make horse racing great. That's why we provide more ways to bet from more places than ever. We've built an entire family of brands to give players more of the rewards they deserve, give bettors the information they need to win, and provide a community for horse bettors. Because the best way to support the champions of horse racing is to champion horse racing. Express Bet. We are racing.
Always nice catching up with our friends over at Express Bet and, of course, up at Adina Springs. And just speaking of Express Bet, they've got a number of really nice Belmont Stakes Day promotions ongoing at ExpressBet.com. So definitely check those out as Ronnie and Jason welcome you back to this live Saturday Belmont Day edition of Gulfstream today from our clubhouse studios. Place is already buzzing downstairs, and it's only going to get more crowded and more juicy as the, as the day wears on. So let's get down to business, my friend. I think as much as we We'd love to see racing's 13 triple crown winner. It's almost equal. In fact, maybe it beats Justify <laughs> in wanting to take down this rainbow set. Yeah, especially when you're going to have, like we said, we're guessing over a half a million dollars in that pool. I'll show you my ticket here for $48.60. Here's with my theory. I wanted to spread in other races because I didn't want to get knocked down. They said, well, who do I want to single? And that is the, the one horse in race number nine front loaded who really ran exceptionally well to, uh, behind a horse that we were both very impressed with. Reason to soar. And, you know, I was sort of thinking you can also maybe single, you know, if you wanted to in our stake race to the galleon mass. I went a little deeper because I had that ability with one single on the card for, uh, I think, affordable $48.60 ticket. Yeah, so I'm blowing up 48 <laughs> bucks combined with 24 <laughs> 424 and Ronnie's going to whack up 48 bucks. Where can you get action like this, folks, where we can cost you a cool $100 in the, in the span of a half-hour TV show about horse racing? No, but Ronnie makes a lot of, uh, lot of sense and some good points there with the front-loaded as his single. And look at that coverage. I mean, you basically got a three. You have a three-horse yeah. spread in the five supporting legs, so good stuff there. And, in fact, off that tough loss last time out with Reason to Soar, or I should say front-loaded, Ronnie, Right. single, right. you'll see that race coming up against a smile sprint bound reason to soar in just a few minutes. But anyway, we got to get through this opening leg and as I look around in this two lifetime lower level, one turn mile Philly Amer Claimer, I want a horse that's just going out for a co-leading trainer at the meet with the Misael Jaramillo, the number seven optimistic shot. It's the drop. It's also coming out of a fairly deep 12-5 that also includes Peart who is the horse to beat a bit later on today in the 11th race. Well, I went with the number nine in here, Luz Estrella. I'll tell you why. I also got the horse that you just mentioned, Optimistic Shot. But Luz Estrella moved to the Tammy Levy barn after the claim, stretching out to mile. Had some traffic problems and finished sixth against this level of competition. That was going seven-eighths of a mile. But here's what I like. Tamara Levy, or Tammy Levy, as we like to call her. First start after the claim in sprints. Course is going from sprint to a route on the dirt. She's four for six, 67 percent, 67 percent in the money with a four dollar and 50 cent return investment. We always watch horses that she claims and they run well first off the claim. And uh, I like the fact that this horse is going from a sprint to a route and uh, uh, going to run well. But optimistic shot also on my ticket. You saw that. And I used the number three appealing Lalabilia. Lollibella. 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 Appealing Lollibella. Lally she is a mouthful, no doubt about Lally that. Bella. And she's got <laughs> some speed there, Mr. Nicoletti. Why don't we get on to race number eight here? This anchors our Belmont Day program here at Gulfstream Park, everybody. It's the $100,000 Soldier's Dancer. We're on the turf. We'll go a mile on a 16th. A solid field, but a field that does not lack early speed. And that may just bolster and intensify the chances in the closing kick of Galleon Mast, who I nearly singled, but I said... Let me just cover my bases. I love, obviously, the uh, the way Driven by Thunder has run recently for Todd Pletcher off the reclaim. Let me just use the speed to back myself up in case Galleon Mast has traffic or doesn't bring his A game. But very much a race that is all about Galleon Mast going in to start this thing. Much like Ronnie's Rainbow Six. You see, just one horse in the ninth by himself. That's the one front loaded. He ran so well last time and was flattered for eons. I mean, Reason to Soar really looks like he could be a sprinter. He is a sprinter worth keeping an eye on. Race number 10 sees me use three in there. That is a good field, a good betting race, and I think trips in an even field are going to be paramount. In the 11th, it is about Peart, and I had my little cheeky rush comment there. <clears throat> Big drop, though, with Peart. It does yeah. seem like they're, they're, they're kind of in a hurry to get rid of her, right? And it also turning back to five and a half. The one to beat, I try to beat it with Rethink Me, but I think that's the one to beat in that particular spot. Now, trainer Rohan Crichton and J.J. Gonzalez teaming up with Rethink Me, and then race number 12 does wrap up the day. There is very little form to hang your hat on there. I looked at that race. I said, you know what? I just want cover. 
coverage. <laughs> if I'm get live there, I want to have four legit chances to hit this thing for 24 bucks. Coverage, 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 coverage. We like front loaded, but we got our tickets back loaded. <laughs> yeah, good point there, Ronnie. And by the way, everybody, we'll wrap up our last scheduled post around 6.30 or so. So we'll wrap up. You'll have 15 minutes or so, give or take to settle in and get those Belmont Stakes wagers in as we all, the world will be watching to see if Justify, all that separates him is that one lap at a mile and a half around the main track at Belmont to becoming Racing's 13th triple and what crown I like winner. They, what I like they do around here, they put the Belmont on every every TV in the whole building. It's the so way it should a, be. Yeah, it's, it's a good way to uh, watch the race. So, no, uh, it's a really, really, really big thing. In yeah. fact, my wife, who's working up in Boynton mm -hmm. Beach now at Palm Meadows, is coming down here today so we can watch the Belmont together. Exactly. And that that, therein lies the point. You got to come out here to Gulfstream. If you're in the South Florida area, you're not New York, come on out, watch the race at the track with racing fans. I mean, how great was it when American Pharoah won it? I mean, oh. I was blessed to be there, but yeah. you were here, and it yeah. was great, it right? Was un unbelievable. Just great. You were up there, but here was, it's so exciting. You wouldn't you'd watch it today. It will be jammed here. Yeah, no, I love that electricity at the track. It's really awesome. And uh, again, if, you, if you're a fan of South Florida racing, as I was saying at the top of the show, you know Galleon Mast, you love Galleon Mast, and you respect this hard-hitting gelding by Mizzen Mast, who will backtrack Talk about electricity. I mean, this was prime time racing uh, during the championship meet on January 20th here at GP. And uh, this is a horse who Erod Ortiz Jr. was aboard for the victory. I spoke, and he'll take the overland route, the big gray on the outside. This horse is a fighter. He loves getting down in the trenches and really getting into those tight dogfight street brawls. But I also spoke with trainer David Fox, and you'll hear that interview later. He's a tricky horse to ride in the sense that if you move too soon, he'll wait he'll hang you gotta time it right so Miguel Vasquez Ronnie as this horse comes off a near 80 day layoff I think will be the right horse to do it and you gotta you get a real <laughs> prime example that Galleon Mast if he hooks you head in head he's probably gonna wear you down for the win and that was the Sunshine Millions turf I believe right yeah, yeah. yeah. hundred fifty thousand dollars a perfect ride and uh, this horse is exciting and the, the key here so much speed in the race, and this one's the best closer, as you just saw. I know, as far as the speed, and it's not a case of maybe some quote-unquote cheap speed. Legitimate contenders oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. may ultimately just take themselves out of the race because they like to run and gun, and they're speed horses. Driven by Thunder, who's been an amazing reclaim for uh, Rapoli Stable and Todd Pletcher, and the old pro on the outside, who amazingly, with his record of 11-26, and 26, is only a six-year-old, the nine class and cash. They are very nice horses in their own right, but again, it doesn't take a whole lot of creative thinking to see those two basically eyeball to eyeball by the time they hit the clubhouse turn. And you also got Tropicat, who's on the inside, who's gone on a two-race win streak, yeah. who likes to win on the front end, which makes Galleon Mast all look the better. But just the touch on Driven by Thunder. Never beaten on this turf course, so it was a good reclaim, and they know where to keep this horse because force is four for four on the Gulfstream turf course. Yeah, so, good, good point. Uh, a nice race. Yeah, Florida bred who hits pretty hard there, son of uh, overdriven. See how he does for Todd, who will look to keep that recent almost Woody Stevens s <laughs> Belmont streak alive, looking for his fourth win in the Belmont. He's got two chances with Vino Rosso and Noble Indy. Let's move on to race number nine. This is not the feature, of course, with Galleon Mast and the crew and the Soldiers Dancer. But this is a very nice-looking allowance optional claimer. And if I'm trainer Jose Pynchon, I'm looking at reason to soar winning a high-quality, high-level race here uh, last Wednesday afternoon a few days ago. And I've got a big grin on my face <laughs> when I'm bringing back the number one front-loaded. And we'll show you that last start, why I think Jose Pynchon and the camper front-loaded should be happy and confident. Because this horse was coming off a long layoff. What was this horse? This horse was on the sidelines for a little over eight months. And Reason to Soar had a ton of recency on the number one front loaded. And this horse came within a neck of defeating Reason to Soar, who beat a better field, a way better field, again, Wednesday in that smile sprint prep. Incredible race uh, last time by, by Reason to Soar. And there was other horses in this race that came out to win their next start. So front loaded really ran exceptionally well. I mean, I think three horses came out. Yeah. And, oh, there, look at that. There you go. Yeah, come on. Uh, we, we do our homework, <laughs> man. And the boys upstairs, as I say, we got a, a tremendous crew behind the scenes. And we've got that chart hot off the press for you. Three 
three next out winners. In fact, all three horses, the only three to return on the dirt, the only horse that is lost out of that reason to soar race came back on the turf. So I think front loaded, the odds will say he's going to make it a perfect four for four on the main off that race here on May 10th. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. And as you saw, we both singled this horse in our uh, exotic tickets, and we'll see how that plays out. But front loaded, certainly the one to beat. Absolutely. Tell me a story. And the six, Baba Toby or Baba Bowie in this case, <laughs> are they the main dangerous? Tell me yeah. a story of the main danger. Yeah, you know, it, stretching out the seven eighths of a mile, rallied to finish second. That was that six furlong allowance last time out. It is Mark Cassi, MSCL Jaramillo. We got top connections there. So a front loaded, uh, uh, you know, gets the old Spalding and bounces a little bit. Maybe you get uh, Tell Me a Story or Prince Tito or one of those other horses, as you say, Baba Bowie. You know, I got to get a Baba <laughs> Bowie in, especially on Belmont Day with the Triple Crown on the line. So, Baba Toby tried to hit him with the hind a bit later in race number nine. Let's flip the page, race number 10, as we head down to the wire. Three more to take care of. And this is another good 10K claimer. As I said with my late pick five, my comment was good field, good betting race, and trips are paramount. We might get some speed in this race, and I'm wondering how that might affect the number seven, who's a, probably the marquee layoff horse in the race, the number seven, Son of Oahu. Uh, top connections here with Mark Cassie and Amisei El Jaramillo. And let's go back in time once again, our second championship season replay on the show today here at GP. This win, in fact, and a gritty half-length score over Great Skellig came back on February 21st. He's had a little bit of a layoff since then, but I think he's a horse that might even be more comfortable when he can stalk a little further off the pace, and he may get that today with the number four, who's very speedy, Paraline in the mix, along with Road Warrior Max, and I respect Tale of Fancy because he's such a hard hitter and he's there every time, but I'm looking for a fast pace here, Ronnie, and I think Son of a Wahoo, although he was up close, I think he can lay a little further back and then come with that run. Well, let's show you stand on Mark Cassie with a horse coming off a layoff of 61 to 100. 180 days claim is on the turf right here at Gulfstream Park. He's 8 for 39. That's 21%. He's in the money 54% of the time. Dollar 68 return investment. So there is reason to believe this horse is going to run well and sit a nice trip in there. But I did go with the three, Taylor Fancy. A solid second on the turf against 12-5 condition claimers a couple of starts back. Goes back to the grass. Race moved from the grass to seven furlongs in the main track. Bobby DeBona, Luis Sanchez, five-time turf winner. I like that one. Oh, he's a tough old horse. And his claiming price, in a way, has eroded steadily over the last a few months and weeks, but he has kept his consistent form, which I really respect. We'll see how he does in a race that is certainly laden with some early pace and some serious early speed in race number 10. It's on to race number 11, and we'll start to have, I would imagine, Ronnie, at this time in the afternoon, maybe a little pre-Belmont pre Stakes butterfly <laughs> thing going. It'll be late in the Saturday card at Gulfstream as we have our final dirt race coming up at five and a half furlongs, a two-lifetime 62.50 claimer fairly notable scratch not as notable per se as the police a two-year-old back in the third but the number one hardcore cat was going to take a little bit of money here however for me the race may ultimately just simply end with the drop down the number six peart who as i was saying earlier with optimistic shot i like the 12-5 she's coming out of and although the claimy sign is out to an extent i think she's in a good spot yeah i gotta run a ticket for all those reasons but i use the number eight rethink me on top of my ticket who's dropping to this level and following after following her uh, 10 maiden score at three quarters she gets to beat a nose in 16 condition claimers that was going five furlongs on that wet surface this ap that afternoon listed as good I thought it was a good race. So I'm going with her. I got perked for well, all the reasons you mentioned. I think this is a pretty wide open race. I was glad I went three deep. I would have liked to go a little deeper. And I'm sure that's what you're going to say about the final race on today's card. Y'all, the last race. <laughs> and again, uh, uh, it's a lengthy day. It's a good day of racing here at Gulfstream. But you flip the page as you're doing the work as a horse player and a fan. And even if you're Pete Aiello and we don't make it easy on you, we've got a 12-horse cast of turf horses to cap the card here. And again, we'll wrap up at around, give or take 6 30 p.m. so you'll have plenty of time to settle in and watch justifies bid for history up in the big apple but anyway three and up philly and mares and again a dozen of them are on the turf here with 12 five maiden claimers in the last i'm just looking down ronnie i see what we both have the nine in the mix this is how tough the race is i mean we're basically all over the place yeah so <laughs> i would figure out quickly who we don't have mentioned and probably box them up and you might have a nice little yeah. nice little wager to cash and then you can just bet 
bet money on the Belmont. Yeah, I mean, it's a, just a wide open affair. And the, the horse that we both put somewhere on the ticket is one I put, uh, put on top. Little Miss May stretching out around two turns, responded last time out. You know, I just thought that was a nice horse to have in the last race at seven and a half furlongs, but wide open affair. And if you, early on, you can find those couple of singles, not the one like we found. Yeah. You go deep in this race. Yeah, I think you're going to want coverage because there's just very little. It's a big field. It's a lower level maiden claimer. And let's be blunt, there's just very little turf form. Somebody may ultimately step up, get a good trip, and surprise. And quickly, I'm hoping the number three Concord Treasure will be sort of a buried treasure type horse today. She's bred to handle the turf, at least as far as the sire goes, being by Treasure Beach. Why not? A decent little post, second time starter. She's going to be a, a pretty, pretty nice price this afternoon. And Lionel Reyes does a good job. He doesn't get a lot of live opportunities at short priced or on short priced horses, but he can ride. He's a good little rider, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, and that you know, he's definitely a good rider. I yeah. like him a lot. I use him. A lot. You know, if he doesn't, it doesn't deter me if he's on a horse yeah. at all. And uh, this horse here, you know, Concord Treasure, of course, can wake up in the last race. It'll be a bit of a price. I had to watch one of those, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll see how that works out. When she upsets, I'll cut you in. You're, <laughs> yeah, in, you're yeah. in for 15% of my late pick five. You got it. All right, sounds good, everybody. Half hour out from race number one, Saturday, June 9th, Belmont Day. What more do you need? Well, we could use a triple crown champion, and we could also use a little Pete Aiello. That's always a good thing. He's coming up next with those scratches and changes. Passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm. From the breeding shed to the racetrack. In pursuit of producing the best. OBS June, the two-year-old source, OBS two-year-old sales grads win at the rate of two stakes a week. June sell graduate Stormy Liberal defeated the world's best in the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Another June sell grad, seeking the soul, captured the Grade 1 Clark Handicap. The OBS June sale is your final opportunity to acquire a promising two-year-old with stakes potential. Under TAC previews begin June 7th. OBS, we measure success by performance.